this week we've got a bit of troubleshooting to do. I've got a few problems that I've got to sort out and um, we'll take a look at a couple of other things as well. We're working on our bridge. So one line goes under the other. So I've got the top of the bridge set up. I've, I've uh, cut out my piers and uh, you'll see here now, my carriage are running underneath it. Now, did you hear that? It's just catching on the bridge. So if we can see the clearance, obviously I need to, I need to flatten this out a little bit, but even so the clearance is not great. So that means I'll have to push this down a little bit more, which means we'll have a steeper incline coming up to this section, which the trains may or may not make. So I may have to just connect up some power and give it a test run and see if we can, uh, if we can make it work. If I can make it work with a bit of a steeper slope, then we'll probably stick with that and that bridge can stay where it is. But we need to do a bit of testing. With one train, one carriage, you get under the bridge okay, but then you get stuck on the other side, that's too steep. So that's challenging. Okay, make some adjustments and see what we can do. So the challenges continue and at this particular point the train decides to derail. I think because there's a different, there's too much height so I've got a little bit too much height here. So I'm going to have to start pulling a little bit of height out of there as well. So this is all the fun that you have, all the technical challenges trying to get everything working. We are going to test the big train going through points on the flat just to make sure that that is working. Let's see if we've got it the right way around. Yep. Okay, so here we go, test number one. Now, well, it seems to like going through the points, but it's on the flat. Okay, so he's good. Seems to be fine. But when he goes uphill, he doesn't like it. So we're gonna have to flatten out those other points on the layout. So I can have to chop out some of that. Uh, we're going to have to ta start our incline later and <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, more technical challenges. We will work our way through it. Back to the drawing board. So it looks like the trains don't like points to be at an angle or a height difference. So here you can see we've got some height differences. So I've got a couple of millimetres here, four millimetres here. In real world, I didn't think that would make any difference, but obviously... Uh, you know, down here, this section, it just doesn't like it. So this is going to have to be flat. That means we're going to have to go a little bit steeper here, but I'm going to have to rework this track plan. So back to the drawing board again. So a few uh, yeah, technical challenges. And again, we've got problems with the bridge here. I think I need to resolve this section first so we can get the height here. Then we know whether we can actually do this bridge or not. We may end up having to scrap this bridge. Uh, and just use this connection in here to join up some trains. But at the moment, I don't know. But there you go, that's uh, making model railways. If you make something too complicated, then you have a lot of challenges that you face. If I'd have just made a nice little simple circuit, then that would have been much easier. But hey, I like to do things that are challenging. We'll see how we get on. Well, today hasn't been that productive a day. So all day long, I've been messing around with the track plans. But finally, I have set in again for the second or third time, the risers. So all the heights have been calculated correctly. So I've glued them, glued in the supports. Uh, the same at the other end, I've glued in the supports here. I've got some things on them just to weight it down, just so the glue can dry. So you can see I've got my little supports glued in underneath, little bits of paper and some foam, different things. So just to keep the uh, to keep it uh, in place while the glue dries. It takes 24 hours to dry properly, um, but uh, I reworked the track plan, printed it out. So I've got all my heights there. There's still a lot of things that we may need to change. So modeling can be 
a bit complicated. Sometimes it's easier to start with a simple layout uh, and then build up to more complicated ones later on. But we'll, we'll work it through and uh, we'll end up with a good result. I love the internet. I was looking for something else and I found this little program called Train Player. And basically it allows me to take the layout that I've designed on any rail and export that into Train Player. So now I can play trains on the computer. I can move them around, I can check out my layout, I can check out the points and the clearances. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So I can click on a click on a train, for example. I can find a train here, and then I can start moving them. So, oh, got to change the point, quick. Uh, yep, yeah, so it's going to go backwards. So yeah, you can control the speed of the trains. They can go faster, or well, not too fast, and then stop him. And then we can set the point. Of course, now this train has now got to go somewhere. So maybe we'll put him into the other siding. So he's going to come down here now. That's all clear. He can come into the station. So now we can control this train. So it's pretty cool. So it gives me an idea. It's, it's not really checking the gradients or anything, but yeah, it's just fun. And I can just see how I can move trains around and what I'm going to be doing. He's going to come down over the bridge. Oh, there's a bridge there, of course. He's not going to crush into that train. So he's going to come. We're going to park him at the station. Slow him down. So we can park him here. Like that. And then now I can get this train moving here. So he's now going to come out. We're going to put him on there. To put that one back. So now I can move this train. So you could design your own little layout, layout on... Um, any rail on the or even on the demo version and then you can this is a demo version as well so you could design yourself a nice simple layout on any rail because I think on the demo version you have a limit to the number of pieces and then you can export that and import it into train player and then play trains on your layout so even if you don't have a real layout at home you can actually make your own one on the computer so if you need any help and then let me know but i hope you can have fun we've glued down the risers so where the riser comes back onto the the main board of course there's a six millimeter high riser here that we've now got to join back to the flat board so i've cut some holes with the jigsaw uh, and now this flat will push up so i've got uh, some little piece of of plywood that I've cut, which is also six millimeters. So I'm gonna put that on another piece of plywood like that. And then we're gonna put that whole thing underneath so that that pushes up the flap. I'm gonna glue that on the bottom. So that pushes up the flap exactly the six millimeters that we need. Can you see? So then that will join with the other piece of, uh, with the other riser. Where we've installed the risers, the edges are edges are quite sharp here so I'm just going to trim off just the edge to smooth it off so when I put on the the extra scenery it's going to like roll off a little bit better onto the edge rather than two sharp edges so I'm just going to trim the edges with a knife uh, just to smooth them out a little bit I need to cut some pieces of plywood for the to go onto the viaduct. Uh, so now we've got our, our jigsaw and we've put on a little metal guide. Can you see that little metal guide? I've got it set to 50 millimeters, five centimeters. So now when I put that on the wood, that keeps me five centimeters so I can cut a nice straight line. So I've marked on the wood where I need to cut, but that's it will, it will cut that anyway. And then we're cutting up to here. I shall draw that on square in a second uh, and then we can get the, the piece of plywood to the right size that we need. We've cut our piece of plywood so you can see that here 
And then now I've also cut some other wooden bits, other bits of pier. So we've got a pier to sit that on. And then I'm just trying to get the right height now. So I've used another piece of plywood here. We've got the, the track underlay. And also now I've had to put in a little tiny piece of foam, about sort of one and a half millimeters, just to bring it up to the right height. So that actually looks about right now. So I'm gonna go and cut a couple of more little wedges uh, of plywood to prop that up. And, and then we can glue it all in. We've glued our pieces in now. So this is all nice and solid in. I've got my, um, uh, my track bed on the top there and you see that goes nicely onto the onto the viaduct so I've done it at both ends so the other end was a little bit shorter uh, we've done it at that end as well so again he's a little bit of a shorter piece here but that allowed me to center the viaduct in the middle of the board so I've actually I can actually run now my whole uh, the whole layout across the viaduct so we will be setting up the test track at some point uh, just to check it out I'm going to be fitting the little digital chip to our loco so that we can run the controls with the iPad. So when you buy the locos, most of them don't come with the little computer chip. So we have to install that. So you see we've got a little, uh, a little chip that comes here. So this is a, a standard chip that we've now got to get inside that loco. So of course there are some very uh, short instructions about how to fit it and where you can find the screws so we can uh, take the, the loco apart. So it's important to read those instructions and of course then we will start to, to do the job. So we need a tiny teeny little screwdriver so I am going to be undoing the screws on the tender. So we've got to find them first. It's very difficult to, to see in there. Uh, and, and then we can get everything off. And that's one. It's not an easy process because everything is so small. And we've got some little little screws here at the front as well. Now I'm also got it all everything on a cloth, so that if I drop any of the screws, that they will hopefully won't bounce away somewhere, because that would not be good. We would lose them. We would never find them again they are very 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 tiny so last one so let's see if we can get the tender off mm, no not quite out so we have managed to relieve the uh, the back it was just sticking a little bit obviously things are so tiny here so we can take the the tender off and you see these little these little plastic lugs here we're actually uh, trapping the, the tender on. But anyway, we've sorted that out. So you can see here, I've got um, some little, little. Uh, well, this is actually a blanking plate here in the back. So we've got to remove this and then install our new computer chip uh, into the train. So it's quite an easy process. We'll just pick up the, uh, the old one, gently pull him out, put him to one side, and then, of course, we've got to insert the new computer chip into the into the board. Now, the, these computer chips have a a little dot on them. Can you see on the on the top top edge here? You might just see there's a tiny little dot. So I know that that then goes in line with the little line that's on the on the um, connector. So we've got to get that gently back into the train like that. So nice and gentle in there. So now he's installed. So now we've got to put back the uh, put back the cover, put all the screws back in, and then we're ready to go and give it a try on the on the test track. You can see we have got this working now. So when I use the the phone, I can slow down and speed up the train or stop it. And obviously, be careful it not going off the end because the train slows itself down by the computer. Well, it's been great having you along. We see you on the next show. 8.30 p.m. Weekdays and Sundays. The Down Personal Special News Houston. For Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen.